D's Greenhouse family. With these three albums and many well-received live performances, Queen Omega has absolutely blazing has been an absolutely blazing trail for female roots reggae artists. She certainly has. I, I, I just can't believe I've discovered her. And she continues to do so with this brand of new collection of tunes. Now, under the wings of the very talented French production Boston Bim and the label Special Delivery Music, she shows that she's improved her vocal delivery further. She mixes says her standard singing with DJing and is equally efficient at doing both. Besides that, she once again fully showcases her devastating ability to write to the point messages. Thus, Queen Amiga is well on her way to creating a sort of consistency the root side of reggae has never had from a queen artist. They really haven't, and they are calling her the queen for various reasons. Some are saying, finally, a queen of reggae now exists. They're solely putting her as the one above all, me, all female singers within the reggae music sphere. So Queen Amiga has been touring several uh, times in Europe, France, Germany and Switzerland and has performed a few of the biggest reggae in events like the SNWMF USA, Jazz Sound in France, African Music Festival in Germany to name a few. She is incredible. I have the lyrics in front of me. We need to listen to her. Queen Omega, welcome to my channel. Jazzmazing Grace is the uplifting reggae version of Amazing Grace and it's her own interpretation and twist with Jamazing Grace, similar to Amazing Grace. You'll, you'll hear it um, as the chorus. But we'll analyze the lyrics straight after. Just enjoy her because there's been an explosion of interest in the last six to eight months, particularly on YouTube. A lot of people like myself are saying, wow, wow. And this is the reason why. Yes, I, blessed love. This is Queen Omega representing for no other song than China Man Yard, Beijing, China. You don't know, stinging Ray, Mitsui, and General Huge. Big up yourself every time. Selector, drop the rhythm. This one hot, hot, and what not. And the men are ready. It's because we are guided by his majesty. Not the limit, not only to the wicked man, Bali. How many songs get killed? Many, many. China man, yard coming very, very deadly. Listen to the silence, sing out the melody. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. God kill us now. Amazing grace, how sweet the 
That is your introduction to Queen Omega, Jamies and Grace. Isn't she incredible? Isn't she just incredible? I'm smiling. I can't believe at last I found a reggae artist of such worth and such delivery and excitement with her when it comes to the vocals, when it comes to her delivery and her interpre interpretation of songs. Some of her songs are very moving. They're not political. She doesn't really politicize her songs. What she does is she talks about the roots and the hardships and all of it in previous songs. Now she's got three albums, as I said, behind her. I'm only catching up. But with the festive season, I thought that would be a wonderful song to bring her into 2023, into 2024. And then I'll get into the other side of Queen Omega because she deservingly, deservingly is called the queen of reggae music. That I wish just went on for another four minutes because I could have listened to that Ooh, for another four or five minutes at least. It's just, it's just incredible to find an artist like this. And I'm really, really thrilled. So we'll get into the actual lyrics itself. It starts, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Well, we sing, she says, thank you, Ja. Me no inner slavery, me fall upon courage and no bravery because I'm guided by King Celesi. No dilly, no dally, no take the wicked man folly. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. So when she comes into the roots of the song, and I'm only giving you my interpretation, it's gonna be brief. There's a lot of colloquialism that I wouldn't have an interpretation from. I think you'd really need to be from Trinidad or have a really rooted um, grounding in reggae music to fully appreciate the lyrics of this and the understanding. But I'm going to do my best as a white Irish man <laughs> interpreting this song. I really am. Because it, I will get into the first in a minute, but I want to read out as much as as I can. There's quite a few lyrics. So the second verse says, the heavy load of Rastafari carry. Few are chosen, but the call goes unto many. Me ever ready, emotionally, physically, mentally, for the really. Anyhow, you diss the rasp. Me know you awfully sorry. We are chosen people. We not deal in folly. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. So she interpretates herself a wretch. And you know, you, you often wonder why a woman of her worth would say, I'm a wretch like me, but is it a wretch in a rebellious way? Because she's talking about you know, thank you, Ja, me no inner slavery. She doesn't feel, I feel, confined to slavery roots. She might descend from that, but she's not interpreting this song like this. She's grateful she's come through all that she's ha all that she has. There's obviously an understanding about this is my roots, my slavery roots. This is my musical roots. This is me as an artist, and I have an appreciation of my upbringing the hardships, but always there's a good element around her. And that shows in her music because she says, no dilly, no dally, no take the wicked man folly. So she's not a person that takes life so seriously, it's going to affect her. She's going to rise above it and move on. Because when you take no folly, that means you take none of the hardships personally, you, you it's almost like you learn from from life and you just move it aside and you say right i've learned from this and i'm moving on so it's a, it's almost like the amazing graces her graces her faith her soul her upbringing 
her sense of fortitude and her sense of being as a person to get through many different things because in the second verse she says the heavy load the raspari carry few are chosen but the call goes on to many what is she talking about when it comes to call i feel it's to express herself musically that it is a gift to have what she has she realizes that she's been performing since nine years of age her mother encouraged it and she realizes she has a voice and it's a voice that needs to be heard so she's more or less saying, thanks a million. I've got a voice where people can hear me through my lyrics, what I have to say. And she's grateful. So it's gratefulness. She's appreciative of her roots. And it's very, for me, uplifting, just like the music. And when she says amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me, her grace, her sense of strength, her belief in God, her belief in, in herself, has saved her mentally and physically from what could have been a life of deprivation. So she's rose above it. She's a strong person, but her faith has seen her through that. It says, if you pick me up when I to go under and you make correction when I did bl uh, a blunder, you give me the strength to cast the wicked asunder. And you for show the signs I did wonder. So is that reference for her mother? Is that reference for the people around her? The people like the guy who took her to London to say, come on, let's do a few sessions here. You've got an incredible gift. The world needs to hear it. It's almost a grateful stretch out and shake hands to all those around her that saw something in her like a shining star and said, you know, you'll not go under with life. We're going. We're, you're going to rise above it, and no matter what blunders, you've learned from it, and you've got the strength to overcome adversity in life and upsets, adversity in life. Sorry, and upsets, and you are going to be a person whose voice needs to be heard. And then she says, "Amazing grace, I sound a wretch like me." So she always refers to a wretch, a person who was emotionally drained, lost, but found the path and rose above it. And she considers herself a wretch like I come from a very ordinary background. It's in reference, the wretch word is very much for me in reference to her past, her upbringing, her roots, that it wasn't a privileged upbringing it was a hard upbringing and somebody like me through the grace of God is able to do what I'm doing and people are coming to listen to me they're buying my albums they're listening to my music I have a wonderful life something from the age of nine I'm enjoying doing so she constantly gives grace and then it says it's you that pick me up when I go under and you make a correction when I blunder and you give me the strength to cast wicked asunder. So in other words, those people that are her left arm, her right arm, that pick her up emotionally, her family, her friends, the production team, everybody around her, to encourage her to move on is what has made her life fulfilled. She's got great support. And it's great through these lyrics in a time of a festive season where most people can't even afford to put food on their table and are worried about the expense of Christmas and all that goes on around Christmas time. That these are encouraging lyrics that you can find fortitude and strength within yourself if you open your eyes through the darkness and see the light through the simple things in life. Like somebody saying they love you, like somebody saying you're gonna be okay, like a friend saying talking to you over a drink, over a coffee, that kind of thing. It's the simple things we need to be appreciative of to realize we're okay. I'm not in this world on my own. And she, she honestly puts everything asunder, all darkness, all because people have believed in her from a young age, especially her mother. She goes on, well, it's you that strike a lightning and roll the thunder and you make the breeze blow through my veranda. It's for you, oh, oh mighty, 
Jeremy ponder, oh what a lovely day. That's why we say amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. So she's giving thanks to her faith, the Almighty. She's giving thanks to the position that she's in. She's saying, thank you, God. Thank you for giving me this path. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And some people, and I will say this, the amount of people that pray and have a faith, but they almost abuse it. They never give thanks. It's quite sad. They want something, so they pray for it. And then they, it's almost like 